Hi everyone, welcome to Nitin Academy and I'm Nitin. I hope you all have watched my previous video on cell systems for PSLE last year. And today, in second year on science, I'll be moving on to chapter 5 model of cells. So, let's jump straight into it, okay? So, for the first segment of this video, I'll be going through the cell theory. Okay, so the cell theory. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the cell theory. The cell theory. Okay, basically there are three main principles of the cell theory. Okay, so let's take a look at these three main principles. Okay. So these three main principles. So first of all, let's take a look at the first principle. So this is the first principle. Okay. So, all organisms are composed of one or more cells, okay? So, all organisms are composed of one or more cells. Okay, first of all, there are two types of organisms, okay? Firstly, unicellular organisms, okay? Unicellular. So, this is the first type of organism, unicellular, and the second type is multicellular. Okay, so this is something that I've taught you in my previous video uh, last year, cell systems, right? So unicellular organisms are basically one cell, okay, because of the word uni. And multicellular organisms are basically two or more, many cells, okay, because of the word multi, okay? So unicellular organisms um, and multicellular organisms, I'll go through in the later slide. And... So basically, this is what they mean by all organisms are composed of one or more cells, okay? So I hope you understood that. Now let's move on to the second main principle uh, of the cell theory. So this is the second main principle, okay? The green color one. So the cell is the basic unit of structure and organization. Organization, okay? So basically, um, let's take a look. Structure and organization. Okay, organization. So, what do they mean by structure and organization? So they actually mean that, okay, I'm pretty sure that last year you guys also learned about the tissues. Uh, so cells, uh, many cells of the same functions like form together to form uh, different tissues and the tissues are joined together to form uh, organs and the organs also join together to form systems and these systems all these systems are uh, formed together to to bring out a multicellular organism okay so basically this is what we mean by structure and organization okay so they actually mean that the structure and organization is basically from these uh, steps okay so i hope you understood that and i'll go through this in a later video Oh, sorry, not in the later video, in the later slide, and more in depth, okay? And then now, let's take a look at the third principle, okay? The third principle is basically that all cells come from pre-existing cells, okay? So this is something good to take note of. All cells come from pre-existing cells, and you should know this because of cell division, right? You know what cell division, right? Cell division. So this is also something that you have learned last year, cell division, but I'll go through it later in this video as well. Okay? So cell division. So what is cell division? So cell division is basically when one parent cell, okay, one parent cell splits into two daughter cells, right? Splits into two daughter cells. And the process continues. So this cell will split into another two cells. Okay. While well, this cell will also split into another two cells. And this is how there are many, many cells. So this is how the cells come from pre-existing cells. So these two cells come from this cell. And these two cells come from this cell. And these cells come from this cell. Right. So this is how all cells come from a pre-existing cell. Okay. So I hope you understood this. Now let's move on to the next uh, next slide, okay? 
Okay, next off we have uh, for the segment number two, we have what are cells? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, what are cells? What are cells? Okay, cells are the basic building blocks of organisms. Okay, basic building blocks. Okay, this is something that you need to know. So, it's the basic unit of life and it's the basic building blocks of organisms. Organisms start from cells, okay? Okay, so, what are cells? So, do you know what is this over here? So, this is a microscope microscope okay what do we use this for we use this to actually view very very small things which which we call are in the micro spectrum okay so uh, cells are one of these really really small things which we cannot see with the naked eye we have to use a microscope uh, to view these cells and examine them okay so the, the common uh, type of microscope used in a science laboratory is basically a light microscope. So let me just write the word light over here. Light. Okay, light microscope. So you should know that. Okay. So now let's take a look at what are cells. Okay, so basically there are two types of organisms. Like I said in the previous slide. So firstly, there are unicellular organisms. And secondly, there are multicellular organisms. So unicellular organisms are one cell organisms because of the word uni. So you know what's a unicell uh, unicycle, right? It's basically a one wheel cycle. So unicellular organisms are one cell. Okay. One cell organisms. While multicellular organisms are many cells. Have many cells. Okay. Sorry, I spelled it wrong have many cells okay okay next let's take a look at these two in more in depth so unicellular organisms are basically only made up of one cell like i just said and such examples could be bacteria yeast amoeba okay so all these are examples and over here this image shows a one a, a unicellular organism okay so I hope you understood that. Now let's take a look at multicellular organisms. So multicellular organisms are basically made up of two or more cells. So let me just highlight that two or more cells. And such examples could be animals or plants. So these are two categories are actually uh, multicellular organisms which are made up of many, many cells. OK, so this is an animal cell over here and this is a plant cell. OK. So I hope I understood that. Now let's move on. Okay. So for the third segment of this video, I'll be going through multicellular organisms and basically the five levels of organization. Okay. So multicellular organism. So here. So this is basically how a cell uh, goes from a cell to something really really large like a human or an animal like a dog okay and this actually relates to the five levels of organization okay so these are the five levels where a cell uh, goes from a cell just a no normal ordinary cell to a humongous human or a dog okay so I hope you understood that now let's take a look at these five levels of organization in depth Okay, so this is the five levels of organization and this is something that we have already learned in primary school. So this is basically a recap for us. Okay, so let's just take a quick recap of this. Okay, so the cells. So this is the first level. Okay, cells. We start at something uh, which is very basic. So cells are basically the basic unit of life. This is where all life starts from, okay? And each cell is actually specialized to serve specific functions, okay? And next, from cells, we move on to tissues. So how do we move on to tissues? So tissues. Tissues are basically cells that perform similar functions 
and they are like put together to form tissues okay so cells that perform similar functions form tissues okay as you can see right if you just take a look at one individual over here this is actually a cell you can see that there's a nucleus here right nucleus and you can see that everything else is still in place so this is actually one cell and all these cells which perform similar functions so all these cells actually form tissues okay so you should know that so i hope you understood that okay so this was the second level of organization and then let's move on to the third level so the third level is organs so how do we go from tissues to organs so basically two or more types of tissues work together in order to form organs okay and can you name me this organ over here as you're right this is the stomach okay and then uh, i hope you understood the third level of organization of organs and then from organs we slowly move on to systems so how is that so systems basically two or more organs okay two or more different types of organs work together to form systems so they work together to form systems okay so uh, this system over here can you guess what it is something related to the stomach yes you're right it's the digestive system okay and this is something we have already learned in primary school and something that i've already covered in primary school okay so i hope you still remember about digestive system and all okay so so this was the fourth level of organization okay from that we move on to the last level okay the last level is basically the fifth level and this is where we actually reach the state of an organism so all the systems work together okay to form an organism and to enable the organism to function properly okay so i hope you understood this quick recap of the uh, multicellular organism and the five levels of organization okay next so next we have the fourth segment of this video basically talking about typical cells so there are two types of typical cells one being animal okay the typical animal cell and the typical plant cell okay so these are the two types that i'll be covering uh, right now okay okay so for the typical cells okay typical animal cell okay do take note that there are some new parts to the animal cell that you're going to learn in secondary school okay so please do take note that okay so this is a typical animal cell okay and right off the bat you can already see that there's something new in it right okay so let me go through uh, each of the parts one by one okay right off we can see that there is this part okay do you know what part is this the part that i'm labeling to this thin membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm okay this part is actually called the cell membrane and i hope you know this already because this is something that you should have learned in primary school okay so the cell membrane so uh, the analogy that i use to refer to a cell membrane is the security card because it helps me remember this more easily and if it does help you remember these parts more easily please do use them as well okay if you're someone who can't remember please do use it so the security guard why do i say so because it is exactly like a security guard it actually uh so the cell membrane is actually a thin and a partially permeable uh, membrane that surrounds the cell basically okay and this uh membrane actually acts as a security guard by a con by controlling the substances which enter and leave the cells okay so this is basically the cell membrane next next we move on to the cytoplasm okay the cytoplasm so what is a cytoplasm a cytoplasm is basically a jelly-like substance okay 
is basically a jelly-like substance which all the cells and all the organelles and all the chemicals are contained in it, okay? And this is where all the cell activities take place and also known as all the chemical reactions which take place in this uh, cytoplasm of here, okay? And this is something that you're learning here, something new that you're learning. So in secondary school, one of the other definitions of uh, cytoplasm is where the chemical reactions take place. Okay, okay, next off we have the vacuole. So all of these, all of these small blue dots over here are basically the, the numerous, numerous small vacuoles. Okay, and these numerous small vacuoles uh, only in animals there are numerous small vacuoles, okay, but for plant cells, there's only one large central vacuole, okay? So this is something that you need to take note of. So um, when they ask for differences between a uh, animal cell and or a plant cell, they might ask uh, state three differences. So one of the difference is definitely going to be that there is a, a there is cell wall absent in the animal cell, or there's a cell wall present in the plant cell, there's a chloroplast, chloroplast uh, present in the uh, plant cell, while there's chloroplast absent in the animal cell. And lastly, the animal cells have numerous small vacuoles, while plant cells only have one single large central vacuole. Okay? So that's something that you need to take note of. Okay, next off, we can take a look at the nucleus. Okay, the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. Okay, you all should know what the nucleus is, right? The nucleus is basically like the brain of the cell. It basically uh, controls all the cell activities happening in the cell. And it also contains something called chromosomes. Okay, this word is very, very new to you, right? Chromosomes. So in primary school, we learned that the nucleus contains the genetic uh, material, right? But here in secondary school, the nucleus contains chromosomes, okay? So what are these chromosomes? They are basically thread-like uh, thread -like substance over here, okay? So take a look. So chromosomes are basically like a thread-like structure. So you see this thread-like structure over here? So these are basically chromosomes. So this is the information center over here. This is the place where all our genetic material is in. So chromosomes contain our genetic material. Okay? And, and this genetic material actually determines our heredity. So basically, um, um, basically when our parents give off their offspring, their, their heredity traits, the, basically their characteristics, which are similar to their parents. Okay, so this is the job of chromosomes. In primary school, we didn't learn this uh, terminology called chromosomes. We learned that the nucleus is the one containing all this genetic information uh, which determines heredity. But in secondary school, we are learning this new thing called chromosomes. Okay, and this is the reason why we all had our genetic material in our cells. Okay, okay next off, after chromosomes, let's take a look at the mitochondrion okay so the mitochondrion so this also is a new part okay mitochondrion okay for some of you which know this part right you might be asking isn't it mitochondria no it's actually mitochondrion when it comes to singular places so if you're pointing if the line over here, the basically thing, uh, basically what we are labeling is only pointed to one mitochondrion, it means that we have to label it as mitochondrion because this is the singular, okay? Well, if there are many pointed together, right? Like this, there's like two, right? So basically what we say is not mitochondrion anymore. It's basically mitochondria, okay? So this is the slight difference that you need to take note of. And same for vacuoles, okay? If they only point to one vacuole instead of three like I did, 
um, basically you do not uh, label it as numerous small vacuoles. You only label it as a small vacuole. Okay, so I hope you understood that. Okay, you guys are still wondering what does the mitochondrion actually do? So the mitochondrion is actually the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, mitochondrion actually uh, releases energy for the cell via cellular respiration. Okay, so these are all the parts of the animal cell. And let me just write down the two new parts that you're learning in secondary school. So new parts, okay, new parts. So first we have chromosomes, okay. So how do we spell it? Cro mo somes okay chromosomes and then secondly we have the mitochondrion okay so we have the mitochondria okay so i hope you understood these two parts which are new to you and i'll go through these meanings more in depth in the later slides okay so so now that we are done with the typical animal cell, let's move on to the typical plant cell. Okay, the typical plant cell. Here we go. Okay, so this is the typical plant cell that you all have seen. And you can already see that the mitochondrions are here. And let me just draw in the chromosomes, the thread-like structure. Okay? Okay. So basically, let's go through each part, okay? So, here, the first part that I'm labeling to. What is this? Okay, you all know this. This is the cell wall, okay? So this is the cell wall. So the cell wall is basically a thick layer of protection for the uh, plant cell, okay? And it also prevents it from bursting and it supports the cell uh, just like our skeletal system, okay? So our skeletal system supports us, right? So just like that, the plant cell has its own type of skeletal system, which is basically the cell wall, okay? So this cell wall actually supports the plant and it also gives the plant this regular shape you can see here. So it's like a uh, rectangle over here, right? So it gives this regular shape for this plant, okay? So you need to take note of that. So, now that we are done with the cell wall, let me just label all the parts that we have already went through. Okay? So, we have already went through the cell membrane. Okay? The security guard. Okay? Cell membrane. We have also went through the mitochondria. Mitochondrion. Because I'm only labeling it to one mitochondrion. Okay? Okay. Next, the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. Okay? And then we've also went through the nucleus. Okay? Nucleus. And the chromosomes. Chromosomes. Okay? And we've also went through the vacuole, right? I've already uh, talked about the single large central vacuole, right? So we have also done with the uh, single large central vacuole. Okay? And then now. Now we get to move on to the next new part, uh, not not new, but the next part that is in a plant cell but not in the animal cell. So the next part is basically chloroplast, okay? So chloroplast. So chloroplast, so what are chloroplasts? So chloroplasts are these uh, tiny disc-like structures which contain this green pigment called chlorophyll which uh, traps sunlight uh, in order to make food for the plant uh, during photosynthesis, okay? So that's the function of the chloroplast. Okay, so these are, um, these are the 
these are the parts of a plant cell, the typical plant cell. So something that is new, uh, something that is different from the animal cell, basically the cell wall and the chloroplast, and also this. So um, single uh, vacuole, plus minus, okay? A single large central vacuole because there's also vacuoles in the animal cell, but here there is a single large central vacuole, while in the animal cell is basically just uh, numerous small vacuoles, okay? And also vacuoles actually contain this thing called cell sap, okay? So for, for example, the plant cell, right? So this large central vacuole actually contains cell sap, okay? So this cell sap here is actually um, contains contains um, many contains contains many things okay contains many things okay such as um, water sugars mineral salts and many more okay so I hope you understood that now let's move on to the definitions of each parts more in depth okay so let's move on so uh, for segment number five i'll be going through cell parts and their functions like i said okay okay cell parts and functions okay so these cell parts over here are actually uh the cell parts which are similar similar for both animal animal and plant okay so like excluding the cell wall chloroplast okay okay so first of all we have the nucleus so we already know what the nucleus is right it is the brain of the cell okay so nucleus is responsible for cell reproduction Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that to you, right? Cell reproduction basically meaning cell division, okay? Cell division. So without the nucleus, cell division cannot occur, okay? Okay, next off, we have the nucleus control cell activities, including repair of worn out parts, okay? And basically, it means that it keeps the cell alive, okay? Without the nucleus, right, the cell will die really, really fast, okay, uh, such as the red blood cells. The red blood cells do not have a nucleus, thus uh, many, many red blood cells are produced and many die at the same time, okay. So, a nucleus also contains genetic material called chromosome, okay. So, Next off, chromosomes. So this is basically the information hub. So info hub, okay. So it's a long thread-like structure, long thread-like structure found in the nucleus, okay. It contains genes that carry genetic material that determine heredity which are passed down from parents to offspring. Uh, like I already explained in my previous slides, okay. Next, so I hope you understood our uh, nucleus and the chromosomes. Okay, next we are going on to the cell membrane. So cell membrane, you all love the security guard, right? Security guard. Okay, the security guard. So the cell membrane is basically a thin, partially permeable membrane that only allows certain substances to pass through. Okay and it controls substances entering or leaving the cell okay so just like i've explained to you in my previous slide so from the cell membrane we are going down to the cytoplasm now okay so cytoplasm so cytoplasm is basically the jelly pool okay jelly pool okay so the cytoplasm actually uh, is a jelly like substance no that's why i call it as the jelly pool and that contains chemicals and organelles that carry out special functions okay so it contains chemicals and organelles organelles such as the mitochondrion nucleus uh, uh the vacuum okay or uh, i mean uh, cell membrane all these things it contains okay so all these organelles it contains in itself okay and this is the site where all the chemical reactions take place 
and where all the cell activities take place okay next we have the vacuum so this is uh, very important okay so this uh, actually contains the needs okay the needs so it contains a liquid called cell sap made up of water dissolved mineral uh, dissolved materials such as sugars and mineral salts which are needed for the cell to survive okay and lastly the mitochondria the powerhouse okay so let me just write that down power house okay so mitochondrion basically releases energy via cellular respiration okay so these are the similar animal and plant cell parts that we have went through now let's go through the plant cell parts that we have not went through yet okay so the two parts a uh, cell wall and chloroplast okay okay so now we have the chloroplast and the cell wall okay so the chloroplast is basically like the kitchen okay kitchen or the cook okay so it basically contains a green pigment called chlorophyll which uh, which the plants need to absorb light from the sun to make food through photosynthesis so this word food that's why i call it the kitchen uh it basically uh it basically uh, makes food for the plant to survive during photosynthesis okay so i hope i understood uh, chloroplast because i've already went through it in the previous slides okay so this is just like a small recap in words for you to like visualize it okay cell wall so cell wall is basically a thick layer that consists of a type of a carbohydrate called cellulose so this is something that i didn't tell you right cellulose so don't mix up yourself with cellulose and cell wall uh, cell sap okay so cellulose is in a cell wall okay and cell sap is in vacuum okay so this is something uh, very common that my classmates used to uh, confuse themselves on uh, during secondary one so please do not confuse yourselves with cellulose and cell sap okay cellulose is found in cell wall while cell sap is found in vacuoles okay so this is quite important take note of that okay the the teacher will penalize you if you uh, mistakenly swap these two uh, when you're writing the answers in open-ended question okay and the cell wall actually surrounds the cell membrane we should already know that okay and it also supports the plant cell and gives it a regular shape so all that i've already went through okay so this was just a quick recap okay so now that we are done with it let's move on okay okay next we have segment number six so basically we are going to talk about animal cell versus the plant cell okay so basically the differences okay so animal cell versus plant cell okay so these are the two things animal cell and the plant cell so the differences that i've already went through okay i've already went through so let's just take a look animal cell cell wall absent while for the plant cell cell wall present okay so for animal cell chloroplast absent and for plant cell chloroplast is present okay and for the animal cell there are many many uh, numerous small vacuoles while for the plant cell there's only one large central vacuum okay so i hope you understood that so these were just the differences that I've already went through, which will just help you visualize because it's in a table format over here. Okay, so now let's move on. Okay, so uh, segment number seven, let's go through the three cell processes. Okay, the three cell processes. So this uh, is just going to be a recap because I've already taught you guys this in primary school. Okay, so this is a recap okay so let's go into it okay the three cell processes can you remember the three cell processes okay try to remember 
uh, take no, uh, take a look at your mind. Okay. Now these are the three cell processes that I'm going to tell you. Okay. First off, cell division. Okay. So this is the first cell process, cell division. Next, it starts with a P. Okay. You guessed it. It's photosynthesis. Okay. Lastly, it starts with an R, respiration. Okay. Respiration. So these are the three cell processes, okay? Okay, so these are the three. One, two, and three, okay? So let's go through the first cell process, okay? First cell process. Okay, so let's take a look at cell division over here. Okay, cell division. So what is cell division? So cell division is basically the process where a uh, one parent cell splits into two daughter cells. Okay. So is the process where one parent cell, uh, uh, cell splits into two daughter cells, as represented by both these uh, uh, images over here. And so this is the parent cell is split into two daughter cells, and these daughter cells soon become the parent cells, right? And these parent cells actually split to these two daughter cells, okay? These four actually. And all these four daughter cells will actually become four parent cells, okay? And these four parent cells, and this cycle will actually continue, okay? And these four parent cells will actually uh, split into eight daughter cells, and then that those eight daughter cells will split into, and those eight daughter cells actually parent cells, which will split into. 16 uh, daughter cells okay so this is like basically a cycle uh meaning that all cells come from pre-existing cells okay uh the third the third um principle of the cell theory okay so i hope you understood that so why is cell division important so something that we need to ask ourselves okay this is something that we might test in the exam why is cell division important so two reasons first off for replacing the dead okay for replacing the dead and damaged parts of the organism okay and secondly for the growth okay of the organism so these are the two reasons why cell division is really important okay so something we need to take note when an organism grows its cells do not grow uh, do not increase in size okay does not increase in size but it increases in number okay as you can see over here this diagram over here it increases in number and not in size okay so let's move on okay okay the second um uh cell process photosynthesis okay so let's take a look at photosynthesis so something that you should already know right photosynthesis so let's recap so how does photosynthesis occur? So the process is basically photosynthesis is the process whereby the plant takes in water, carbon dioxide from the surroundings and use chlorophyll in the leaves in the presence of uh, sunlight or just light to trap sunlight to make food and release oxygen. So this is basically the process of photosynthesis, something uh, you all should be familiar with. Okay. So I hope you understood this uh, part on photosynthesis. So let me just recap. So photosynthesis is basically done in sunlight. Okay. So the plant takes in carbon dioxide, basically something that we breathe out every day and it takes in water. That's why we have to water the plants, right? It takes in water and in the presence of sunlight actually uses its chlorophyll from the leaves over here. Okay. This is the chlorophyll. Uh, uses chlorophyll to make food or uh, to actually trap sunlight to make food uh, during photosynthesis okay to release oxygen and glucose so glucose is basically a sugar so basically like a food food source okay so glucose is basically sugar which is food for the plant okay so i hope you understand that so now let's move on okay the last cell process respiration Okay, so this is representing respiration. So the process of respiration is basically when the animal uh, takes in digested 
the animal or plant. So let me just draw a small little flower over here. Okay. So imagine this is a plant. Okay. So the animal or plant takes in food for the plant and digested food for the animal. Okay. So uh, the animal takes in digested food and oxygen while the plant takes food and oxygen. Okay. To give out energy and carbon dioxide. Okay. So this is basically respiration. So the organism takes in digested food and oxygen and it releases energy and carbon dioxide. So this is the process of respiration. Okay. So let's just uh, take a look at the definition. So respiration is the process whereby the cells in the organism use oxygen and digested food to release energy and carbon dioxide. Okay. So the cells in the organisms use oxygen and digested food to release energy and carbon dioxide. Okay. So I hope you understood that. Now let's move on. Okay. So here for segment number eight, we have specialized cells. So let's go through specialized cells. So like the typical cells, we have specialized cells, okay? And this is something that I've also went through last year and you guys should know this. So let's recap, okay? Let's recap on specialized cells. So can you uh, tell me some of the specialized cells that you've already learned last year? Okay, so you have learned sperm cells, um, the, the root hair cell and the red blood cells. So this is what I'll be going through again, okay? Okay, so the specialized cells. So first off, we have the sperm cell, root hair cell, and the red blood cell. So uh, sperm cell is from animal, root hair cell is from plant, and red blood cell is from animal. Okay, so firstly, let's take a look at the sperm cell. Okay, so sperm cell. Okay, let's take a look. So this is the sperm cell. Okay, so this uh, so how is the sperm cell specialized actually? So the male reproductive cell, uh, the sperm basically fuses with the female reproductive cell egg in the process of fertilization. Okay, as you can see over here, this is basically the female reproductive system. So I still hope you remember this from primary school, okay? Okay, so, so the sperms actually fuse with the uh, a female reproductive cell, right? And then next, we have the sperms are released at the vagina. So this over here, this opening over here is actually the vagina. Okay. And then uh, the, the tail of flagellum over here. Okay, so this this part over here, over here. Okay, can you see this? So this part we is represented as the tail or in better terms, the flagellum. Okay. The flagellum jaw lum okay so i hope you understood that so this flagellum actually helps the sperm to swim to the fallopian tube so this over here is actually the fallopian tube so i hope you have not forgotten all these parts or uh, to fuse with the egg in the process of fertilization okay so can you, uh, do you remember the other part? So this is the ovary, right? Ovary, and this is the uterus or the womb. Uterus. So these are the parts, okay? So I hope you still remember these parts, okay? So, so this is how the sperm cell is for specialized. It has a tail and it is a reproductive cell that helps to, helps to fertilize the egg cell. In the process of fertilization so i hope you still remember what happens in fertilization so imagine this is the sperm and this is the egg cell oh yeah and something else you need to take note of okay so the sperm cell is actually the smallest cell okay it's actually the smallest cell in the whole entire world okay and the and the egg cell is actually visible to the naked eye, okay? So we don't even need to use a microscope in order to see it. We can see it with our own eyes, okay? So this sperm 
so there are actually many many sperms okay so actually many many sperms okay so imagine of these many sperms this sperm is the first to fertilize the egg that means no other sperms can be allowed into this egg this fertilized egg already because the egg will actually do this something like a freezing so that all the other sperms will actually uh, lead to die because the the female reproductive system uh, where the sperms actually swim right at the vagina is actually really really acidic so all the other sperms will actually die because of the acidity okay so i hope you understood that so now let's move on to the next specialized cell which is the root hair cell okay so the root hair cell okay so this is a root hair cell and straight off the bat you can tell that there's something different with this cell than a normal plant cell so this here is basically the something different okay so we call that the elongated protrusion okay elongated protrusion okay okay and we can also see that there are no chloroplasts okay Okay. oh it's blocking the words so let me write that somewhere else so there's also no chloroplast so these are the two differences okay and there's a reason for this elongated protrusion and this no chloroplast so let's go through that okay the root hair cell does not contain chloroplast like i just said while the leaf does so why is this so okay the root hair cell is found underground because you know the roots are actually in the soil underground right that's why and it is not exposed to sunlight okay so since it's underground it's obviously not exposed to sunlight and thus the root hair cell would not need to carry out photosynthesis and would not need any chloroplast which contains chlorophyll to trap sunlight for photosynthesis to make food for the plant okay so this is the reason why there is no chloroplast needed for the root hair cell and this is something really really commonly tested in exams so exams okay so you need to take note and then secondly the root hair cell has an elongated protrusion like i said and why is this so why does it need an elongated protrusion okay this is actually to easily so it's to ease on okay the elongated protrusion increases the surface area of the roots in contact with the soil for faster absorption of water and mineral salts okay so imagine if the root has cell uh continued like this okay imagine if the root has cell was actually like this okay there will only be this amount of red color the red color is basically the surface area there will only be that amount of surface area okay while with the elongated protrusion there will be this amount okay so the blue color thing that i'm outlining right now will actually be the surface area increase so right off the bat you can see that there's a very very significant large amount of increase in the surface area in contact with the soil right so this actually uh increases the absorption at a faster rate okay so absorption of water and mineral salts which is necessary for the plants okay so i hope you understood about the root hair cell now let's move on to the uh, red blood cell okay okay the red blood cell so this is something that you have learned in primary school as well red blood cell so this is actually from the animal and you can also see that there is a dent oh my sorry it's the blue color can see that is uh, there is a dent in the middle okay and the red blood cell contains no nucleus okay it has no nucleus okay something that you need to take note of okay so these two are stars okay no nucleus and there is a dent in the middle okay now let's go through the meaning so how is this cell specialized so it does not contain a nucleus okay 
does not contain a nucleus. So there are uh, there's an uh, advantage and a disadvantage for this. So the red blood cells can carry more oxygen, which is then transported through the blood vessels to all parts of the body at a faster rate. Okay, so this is the advantage of having no nucleus. It saves space, which allows the red blood cells to carry more oxygen. Okay, okay one of the disadvantages. The red blood cell cannot carry out cell division. Okay, cannot carry out cell division. As a result of having no nucleus, okay, it cannot uh, carry out cell division as a result of having no nucleus. Because you all know that the nucleus is the reason for cell division, right? Without the nucleus, there is no cell division. Okay? So, instead, they are produced by the bone marrow. Okay? So, this is something that you need to take note of. So, since we have went through why that uh, there's an advantage and disadvantage for no nucleus, right? Now, let's take a look at why there is a dent. So, the dented center actually gives the red blood cell a larger exposed surface area for faster absorption of oxygen to to carry more uh, oxygen basically okay and for faster absorption so basically to collect the oxygen faster okay so that's why there is a dent for more surface area okay so i hope you understood that okay so these uh, were the three specialized cells that i've just went through now let's move on okay Okay, so for the ninth segment of this video, I'll be going through division of labor. So this is something new that I that you're going to learn in secondary school. So this is new. Okay, so take note. Okay, so let me just start this. Okay, so this is something new that you're they're going to learn. Okay, so let's take a look at division of labor. Okay, so these are the three steps to division of labor. Okay, so first step, second step, and third step. So let's take a look at the first step. In a multicellular organism, okay, each type of cell, okay, every type of a cell actually specializes in performing a specific function, okay. So that's the first thing we need to take note. It specializes in performing a specific function. And the division of labor actually divides up the functions, okay, of the organism amongst the different uh, the different specialized cells, okay? Amongst the different specialized cells, okay? So actually like splits up the work, okay? So uh, thus came in the name division of labor, okay? And then this actually allows different functions to be performed uh, at efficiently. Okay, this allows different functions to be performed efficiently at the same time. Okay, so what um, basically is that in a multicellular organism, each type of cell specializes in performing a specific function. Okay, and division of labor actually. Uh, separates the cells into each group okay so uh so this group of cells okay you do this job and then another group of cells okay you did this job uh you're different from them you do this specialized job that you are good at doing okay and oh this group of people are good at doing the other job so you are you guys are good at doing this job you do that job okay so this split it up into this kind of segments and and this allows different functions to be performed efficiently at the same time throughout okay so this is basically a uh, division of labor, nothing much, but this actually gives a whole new meaning to uh, splitting the work, okay, at a cell level, okay. So there's many things we can learn from cells, right? <laughs> because uh, us humans, us humans, we are not really good at teamwork, okay. So um, at a classroom state, right, many people are like arguing, okay. So this is what cells are good at. They actually split themselves up and do this, okay? So they do uh, what people are good at, they do what they are good at. And and what other cells are good at, they do what they are good at, okay? So learn, do what you're good at, okay? So we can learn from the cells. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, last, last segment of this video. Okay, the microscope. 
So the, the type of microscope we are going to be using is actually the light microscope. Okay. So this is the microscope that we use in the science laboratories. Okay. So let's go through the parts of the microscope and some important points. Okay. So this is also something new that you are going to learn in secondary school because the microscope, uh, you get to actually use the microscope in secondary school, unlike in primary school. Unless uh, some of your primary school might have used the microscope, I'm not too sure. But personally, from uh, in my primary school, I did not get uh, the opportunity to use the microscope. Okay, so let's just take a look uh, step by step at these uh, at these at these uh, parts and pieces of the microscope. Okay, and how to handle them safely. Okay, next. Okay, so let's take a look the microscope. So this is a light microscope, okay? It wouldn't be this colorful, it's actually black and white, okay? So first off, we have the body tube. So this part is actually known as the body tube, okay? This this part over here is actually a uh, spinning, okay? So we, we spin, we actually turn it around in order to fit the objective lenses at which uh, uh, at which magnification we want it to be so that's 10 uh, times 20 times and 50 times okay so the resolving nose piece actually turns and the objective lenses are basically for the magnification so if we want to use a uh, 50 50 uh, magnification right we actually turn it until 50 is aligned with this uh, with this hole over here you can see this hole right right okay and then next we have the stage clips. So these are the stage clips. Okay. So these actually holes are in the slide. Okay. And we have the stage. So this is the stage over here. So this is where we put in our slide and stuff. Okay. So the stage level can actually be adjusted. Okay. So this over here is the diaphragm. Okay. So just like a diaphragm in our lungs, this is also a diaphragm in the microscope. Okay. And over here is the illuminator, uh, number seven. This is the illuminator, which actually shoots out the light. Okay, it shoots out the light in order for us to see the cells that we are handling with in the microscope. Okay. Okay. Next, let's take a look at uh, number eight, which is the eyepiece. So this is where we put our eye into to look into the microscope to see the cell and examine it. So this is the arm. Why we say this look kind of, it looks like kind of an arm over here, right? It looks like an arm. You see that? Yeah. So we could we could remember like this this part of, is the actually the elbow. Elbow. Okay. This is not uh for science, but we could remember and this is the forearm. Okay, forearm. And this is like our biceps or triceps, okay? So we could remember it like that, okay? So I hope you understood that. And then these are two knobs over here. So one is the cost adjustment lens and second is the fine adjustment lens. Okay. So it's to adjust the lenses. Okay. Okay. And lastly, we have the base. So uh, something that you need to take note of, right, is when we are carrying a microscope to our lab table, right, we actually need to hold the microscope by the arm and by the base. So using two hands, we hold it and we put it down. Okay. So that's something you need to take note of. So let's take no, uh, take a look at how to use a microscope. So first off, when focusing on a specimen, you should always start with the lower po uh, power objective. So basically start at 10 magnification, okay? Secondly, when using a high power objective, only use the fine adjustment knob, okay? So when you're focusing at 50, right? So if you're focusing at, sorry, if you're focusing at 50 times, right? You should use the fine adjustment knob, okay? And the type of microscope mo uh, used in most science classes is actually the micros light microscope, which I already uh, told you to told you many times, okay? And lastly, the number four, I've just told you this. You should carry the microscope by the arm and the base, okay? So this was the last segment of this video. And with that, I've come to the end of the video, okay? And I hope you understood everything that I've taught you in this video, okay?
Okay, so thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this video and understood more about Secondary 1 Science, uh, the fifth chapter of Model of Cells. And I hope this video really helps you. And if you're not subscribed to Nitin Academy, please do subscribe and be a part of our family. Thank you and bye-bye. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.